evening wherever you're coming from in the world um i'll just okay. check that we're, we're actually live bro and um If you land on, let us know. If we are live, let us know. Give us some comments. Give us some love. Um, I think we're in. Can, can you see it on your side or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Yay. We made it. Awesome. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Welcome, 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 Chi Ascension Tribe. We have the beautiful Darren Beckett uh, here today. Um, and yep, we've got some highs. Thank you very much. Please drop some love. What I would really love to feel is where you guys are coming from in the world today. That would be like really, really awesome. Um, yeah, so Darren is uh, from LA. He's a beautiful, beautiful being, beautiful man, part of the team, um, part of the, you know, the Galactic Council of <laughs> Sacred People Holding Point for the Chi Ascension Tribe. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he's a super multidimensional, very talented, um, you know, man across many different ways, um, holds a sacred masculine. And, yeah, and he's just a lover of Qigong and he's dived deep into to Qigong. And, uh, yeah, and today we're just going to basically have an organic chat about about qigong and chi and lifestyle and just sort of like whatever whatever really really flows um darren i might hand it over to you and if you could give yourself a bit of a introduction and let us know why you're here and maybe how this all came about absolutely hi team what's going on super excited and pumped to be here with the chi ascension tribe tons of love your way across the globe uh, I'm just super pumped to to be able to be on this live call with you, Ryan, to express my group gratitude for the team, for the group, and for what we're doing with the, the world at Qigong and bringing it to people's hearts and to have them embody more of this energy into their life. Um, and really to help, you know, <clears throat> to help all of us understand and process what all this information means. Um, and there's there's so many different wonderful tools that that people have used across time and qigong the qigong lifestyle being you know the flavor that i enjoy the most um so yeah super excited i've been studying qigong for the last decade or so martial arts my entire life um yeah really finding qigong was a, a blessing not just because the work is so powerful but because uh, for me personally it allowed me to, to, as you said, embody the divine feminine within the the more masculine identity that I hold in in this life, and I feel very grateful to. Um, I feel like I feel like I feel very grateful that it, it, there's there's been many past lives where I've experienced uh, these these types of uh, monastic lifestyles and and lifestyles where. Uh, you know, we're, we're finding herbs off the ground and going deep into the mountains. I know we've shared a few of those lifetimes. So it's nice that we get to do this through technology and really bring it to the world in a, in a brand new way. I'm super pumped. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, man. It's a really interesting time when you look at, when you look back at the, you know, one of my lineages says that, um, Qigong goes back 16,000 years, you know, and they've got 5,000 years of recorded history. And you just think of the different times that this art has been as alive and, you know, thriving for like all that time through so much diversity. And yet it's, there's still so much of this, this art that's uh, alive, you know, obviously when Chinese culture, they keep a lot of the, um, they, they keep it secret for, for many good reasons. You know, there was um, cultural revolution. Um, <clears throat> it was, it was also like before there was weapons and, and, and that it was like having these certain um, skills that would activate your ability to, to, to see the future or activate your ability to like um, absorb heaps of knowledge or embody sort of wisdom or increase your overall intelligence or your connection to life. It was like an advantage, you know, before, before guns came along mainly. And um, at that pivotal point, um, there was a, there was a time where, where, you know, technology sort of took over and I think everyone placed their power and, um, outside of themselves in many ways. And I feel the last decade in particular has been a real deep return to um, 
to the internal, like like to actually mm. to, you know, realizing you know outside we've got we've got you know there's there's so much technology and things we've got outside, but like actually if we can integrate our inner technology, um, and you know said guru from the yoga perspective calls it inner engineering, and uh, which is a cool name, and yeah, but if we can upgrade our inner technology, which I you know which obviously qigong brings to the table in many different facets, many different forms, and Oh, it's just so life becomes so fulfilling you know because we're in this body you know we're in this lifetime and just the upgrades that you can experience you know actually it might be a good segue like last night um you know with this like this the, the quarantine and that i um I've, i haven't missed the moon working with the moon for over a year and i was just yearning and my body was like go out and go out <laughs> Yeah, so I went up to the mountain. I'm 930 meters up here, and I went to the mountain. Um, it's like 1,110 meters, and yeah, just like it was so freeing to get out and just be. And as soon as soon as I walked out, and the the, the moon was massive because because we're up higher, it just looks aesthetically, you know, alive. And yeah, as soon as I can just feel that energy, it's just like I'm reconnected to nature, and it's just <laughs> like the importance of. The importance of finding our connection in nature in these times, I think, is just super important. And um, you know, Qigong has been a way for me to directly connect connect back to nature. And one of my teachers, and it's always been a mantra in my mind. It's like, when you're one with nature, nature will protect you. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just know that every time I'm in sync with nature and in harmony with nature, like good things flow. I'm in the right place at the right time, and wonderful things unfold, which is. Um, yeah, which is just like super beautiful. Yeah, I, there's definitely, I mean, the the terminology, right? Even though it's yin yang, but there's a lot, there's just more yang energy on the planet, and it's 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 been prophesized that things were going to cool down. We didn't know how. I don't think anyone knew how. And if they said they knew how, they didn't know. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I think that 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 significance is is also part of the the opportunity because there's an opportunity to do things in this life that we wouldn't have had in other lives. And there's an opportunity to utilize technology as we are to, to have a better benefit in the world. Often I tell people, you know, how far can you see with your eyes? You, know, you can only see so far. You can only see stars that are so far, right? The stars that you can see with your visible eyes are the closest stars. They're all in our own galaxy. They're not in any other galaxy. So, but when we go, when we go internally, it's, it's infinite. There's an infinite amount of space to explore. There's an infinite amount of dimensions to explore. And um, yeah, certainly, you know, you and I have experienced uh, Qigong on levels that have brought us to uh, be able to, okay, it reminds me of Dr. Strange. He's like pulling in and out dimensions and, you know, there's there's a weapon there. There's a shield there. We're absorbing. There's there's all we're we're working with all the energy systems, right? Not just the chakras, not just the meridians. We're not just working with the organs. It's it's a combination of the the entire energetic field, and that's why I love Qigong so much. Um, it feels like like uh, like an upgraded version of of yoga. And no disservice to yoga. I love yoga. <laughs> Um, it's just a personal preference. And I think that's also the beauty in it is we can all discover what's right for us at this time and then just like get on it. It's like, there's the, the only, I love when you say embodiment because the only way that we can truly, as far as I'm concerned, live a, a life where we're in balance with nature and in mm -hmm. the world that we, that we co collaborate, the only way it's going to work is if we're able to embody those energies as much as possible and keep, keep ourselves grounded, keep ourselves calm and allow our bodies to process the, the energies effectively. I think yeah. that's, it's just like, there's so much intellect right now. There's so much, I feel like maybe you want to speak to that really quickly. Like there's all this information. And, and of course the Qigong world can be, you know, people have written dissertations on it and there's schools of Qigong and there's, the uh, sciences of qigong but um yeah sometimes keeping things simple you know like as like you said like doing your qigong on the, with the moon and like just being with the moon and being with the energy and then allowing your body to absorb that 
And um, yeah, maybe you want to speak to that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there were so many good pieces in there that um, um, hmm. yeah. Okay, we'll go embodiment, intellect, and then we'll go to the moon. So, why why embodiment is is important is because it's like you know we came in this lifetime and this body is a vessel and it's and it's and it's the same with the earth like it's the matter of the earth and so when we really claim back our bodies why that's important in this period is we to lead a new earth and to lead a renewed earth and to really come out through this current crisis um which is a great opportunity for many and, an, and a great awakening for everyone even if it's through hardship um and it's about pivoting into a place where we can make the most of this time but when we really connect with our bodies and then we really reestablish our connection to the land, there's a different wisdom and intelligence that's different to actual intellect. It actually informs intellect as well. It's like it, it's, but if we're not connected to it, we'll never know. And that's why, um, like I have a deep compassion for everyone in the world. I, I fundamentally believe that um, a lot of the conspiracies and the theories and stuff like that, it's good to have a broader narrative of what's going on to truly understand. And I think like I, I kind of dedicate like maybe five, percent of or 10 percent maybe to look a little bit deeper um and and but like ultimately there's this great fear narrative you know behind every conspiracy theory and one of my masters said to me it's like okay when you have a when you have an awakening this is one of my western masters too he said when you have an awakening um what happens is you're channeling the chi through your body but then you're channeling it through your emotional body so if you don't do the embodiment work if you don't do the yeah. And to be honest, uh, yeah, if you don't do it, truly go down to your, into the emotions and work through it, then it's always going to be this feared, anchored, like, conspiracy. So then that's actually quite dangerous in a sense. So you can have really, like, good information coming through, but then it's filtered through this feared lens. Like, it's going to be the end of the world, or this is happening, or that is happening. And so then what happens is the, the current of truth is coming through. Some sort of living potentiality is informing you of something, but then the fear takes it and turns it into, like, this like you know and so it's it's hard then for us to really um because then people fall into the into into the into the into the fear side of things so yeah it, it's like it reminds me of when you look at an aura and you look at different different people and maybe the feelings they're having or the experience they're having and you're looking at their aura and the, the the cloudiness or the zinginess or the the amount of energy moving in ways that it just it's like not bad or good, right? It's just, it's chaotic. We can't really come to clarity without, without understanding. Are we, are we in chaos? Is our emotional body in chaos? Yeah. And you're, it's like, I totally feel you on that where we've got to feel ground. We've got to feel neutral before we, before we step into that space. Right. But you know, we can't mm -hmm. really be embodied if we're not feeling neutral. If we're well, coming to our, our, our right. you know, if we come to our divination and we're, and we're, emotional we're going to have an emotional response if we come to our relationships and we're not neutral then we're and we're polarized then we're not giving ourselves the best chance of of feeling like like we're embodied right yeah that's a really good point i'll talk into that because that, that might bring up some deeper questions for people who are listening which is beautiful uh and yeah you're spot on when we're in that neutrality then we're just our zone is on our intuitions is just just boom you know it's very clear very clean um and then also like part of the awakening journey is like oh, like the, the polarization between mind and emotional body and and especially when life force comes in it can crack open it can crack open that emotional and so there's got to be what what we call it is a maturing of of the ma the masculine being able to hold the feminine not not because the feminine can't hold herself but because like often we freak out when that raw potentiality comes and we're like, oh, let's try to close it down. Let's try to put it back in a box. And we, we live with that in our fears and we're scared of our own feminine, which Absolutely. is a our body. So yeah, yeah, I just wanted to chat to like the most important energy now is that we can hold space for each other. And it's, 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 it's beautiful. And sometimes it's, it's, it's harder in, in um, it's harder in practice and theory, obviously, but it's such a beautiful awakening when we can hold space for, people when they're going through um, whatever they're going through, but it's always like trying to pivot back to that neutrality so we can find our center because inside that center, you know, um, a thousand things start to heal and start to realign and start to reconnect. So it's like 
finding our way back home. That's why I like about Qigong and the mm-hmm. Dantian or just sort of sitting there on the silent meditations. It's like finding my way back home is like I can do the deep work and then I can go back to that that central point. So I just thought I'd speak to that because um, that's probably... I, that's probably yeah, I love it. I mean, there's a, it's like one of the things I love about Qigong is there's a mixture of, mm-hmm. of the physical, the mental and, and the emotional and spiritual. So, and... Uh, one of the one of the even more fun things about the original characters, right? We write in English, and it it doesn't really have the same vibration when you write in the the traditional language. You know, like Tai Chi, like the Tai actually is like a guy expanded and in all directions, and then mm-hmm. that little that, that, like, like you know that that lower Dan Tian, like that's where the center is, and it's so easy to get kind of mangled and trying to, I always tell people like, why are you trying to solve your mental issues with your mind? It's like, you're, it's like, it's like fighting a big giant with a people, you know, a piece of paper. It's just not going to do anything. (laughs) So (laughs) it's like, we got to go through the body to get to that place. And um, yeah, feeling an expanded sense of self starts with feeling an expanded body. You know, if we're always in pain or if we're always feeling, mental anguish um we got to heal and if we're out of healing then we can start to move in these other directions but i think that's also like a a nice segue into like you know we need you know people need to heal we all need to heal i even you know during when we started shutting down my body went through a phase where like i had i had skin eczema and i was like whoa why is this showing up it's like oh it's showing up because I've been go, 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 or, you know, I've been driving, you know, to, to go places all the time for years, or, you know, it's just like all of a sudden life slowed down and whatever was present, whatever I was meeting was present and being able to relax into that space and not go, something's wrong with me, but more so that something's right with me. Something is moving, right? Like the Tao is like, we're moving. There's a changing line. So, uh, I think that also helps calm my mind. Like, okay, you're, it's good. You know, like do the things you need to do to be wise about the situation and then embody, you know, what, what does my body want to embody more of? And I think those are the tools that Qigong teaches that I think are, you know, are so effective um, from a physical, a physical sense all the way up to the spiritual sense. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to those on the call. Hi, Hi, Jackie um we've got what's up Billy, tilly diana how you doing peggy lee how you doing suzanne hello rob how are you wendy and peter nice any and, questions and for the chat? yeah if you've got any questions uh anything you'd like to us to speak into you know just to just literally just speak into you know assuming that we know anything um we might just have something that can help you a little bit on the path, you know, so we, or, or we might actually have a lot, who knows, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah, and Kylie, how you doing? She's just dropped in, which is awesome. And Mary, awesome. Oh, and Annika, your, your beautiful friend who's in there. She's loving the, the, the quest, which is amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> big love for you all. Um, yeah. Um, Oh, just on the intellect piece too, like why it's important to ground outside of that mental body is because once we make that sink down into earth, yeah, like we actually start to, once we make the connection to earth, our the mental planes go from logic up to like, I, once we de- developed and solidified logic as a collective, um, it was kind of like a big breakthrough for humanity. Uh, and particularly at that time we split, um, we, you know, astrology was considered a science at once, at once upon a time. And then basically once collectively developed logic, we, we split astrology and science away. So science became a, its own compartment and astrology became its own compartment. And that was a good thing. That was a breakthrough. But now we see logic as this pinnacle. But, you know, it's, um, if you look at the, the deep maps, it's like, and I, and I just noticed from my own embodied experience, it's so, so real, so true. Logic is the, the lowest level on the highest mental planes. So logic is the is, is the lowest level on the higher mental planes. And that's where a lot of people are stuck, like on yeah. this thing. It's and dense. They're, yeah, emotional bodies also anchored down. They've reached the top of that mountain and they're, they're afraid to even let that go and experience other dimensions of intelligence. So when we ground down to the earth, 
we can actually surrender logic and open up. And the saddest thing, even though that was a great breakthrough, the saddest thing that took place at that time was astrology used to influence our perception of um, the cosmos and nature deeply. So we're entwined with that, with the suns, the star systems, etc. Um, so we used to track that, you know, it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a collective thing. And so now what's happened is that split away, we've become so polarized in our head and we've lost connection to astrology. And um, so basically the study of, of cosmology or, or astrology basically lights up the soul. Sometimes a person doesn't get it, but if you're tuned into your soul intelligence, which is different to my body, mind, um, logical kind of wisdom, my soul intelligence goes, boom, whoa, okay, there's something in this that's, that's, that's lighting my soul up because it's an interesting game coming here as on this planet because we have the body mind personality that is made up of our societal structures, what mum and dad or culture told us about ourselves or what we've come to realize about ourselves. And some of that was emotionally anchored in. It's not even logical. And then we're trying to navigate this world. We have a couple of little awakenings on the way, but then there's this soul that has, has so many lifetimes, so much wisdom, so much knowledge and making that shift into soul is what this time is about, you know? And, um, I was saying last, like last night, I, I was like, oh, I don't give up about money. Like I don't give, you know, I don't, it's like what I care about though is people's soul and like, why have they come here in this lifetime to make that, to make that shift. So yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to talk to into that because it's like, um, Oh, when we can step into the love of our soul, we can we can move beyond the paradigm of, of our body and our mind, not to be exclusive of it, but to vibrate that soul of consciousness through the being. And it's a much more uh, a static way of living, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I love, I love what you're saying, Ryan. And there's so much that we can do like our soul is so much bigger than this container we live in in this one lifetime right it's like you have a small cup you can't just keep filling up with water and expect it to fill up continuously water is going to drip over but if you recognize that you are the very thing that you are pouring in the cup then you don't have to pour you don't have to keep trying to fill it up you're it's like you we become okay right like i love when we're doing the qigong and at the end like i fill my dantian but then I don't need all of it. So the rest goes to the earth, right? Like we're going to cultivate more energy than our body, mind, and our spirit need. And, um, and I love what you said about, about soul because, you know, there's no, it's no happenstance. The sun is S O L, right? <laughs> it's like, it is part you know, that greater, it's like, uh, the sun God Ra, right? So it's the identity of the sun is that, that, that personality that we show up with. And I remember I was explaining astrology to someone, and uh, this one woman, she leaned over and she said, you know, we discovered that we don't revolve around the earth like astrology. We don't need to look at that anymore. And I said, but you don't live on the sun. You live on the earth. So mm -hmm. there, there is a sense of like we, we can't run away from the idea that we are human. We live on the earth. There are things that our body needs. And actually, the the what we're calling this, like, you know, the awakening or or enlightenment to some degree is really just us being able to cultivate the energy at such a high frequency that we're not even, we're not trying to be in the drama of life. There may be drama, but we're not trying to be in it. We're not trying to meddle in the destiny of, of what we're here to do. Instead, we become aligned with it and life becomes incredibly, uh, fluid, and I think that's where a lot of a lot of the ancient secrets can get a little lost. You know, people become crazy on the chi, or you know, they never want to come back into society. And I think that's why we have this like beautiful moment in time where, I you know, I always say like the sage is coming off the mountain. We now get a chance to co-collaborate. You know, like you're a sage in, in a lot of ways. I'm a sage in a lot of ways, and so are many other people. And we can all co-collective create an energy field that we can all play in it's very aquarian and it's important that we continue to honor our own identities within the collective i think that's something that um is really important for people to find out like right like we're giving tools but at the end of the day it's, it's your life and so you know what are you going to make of it what are you going to what kind of practice are you going to bring and uh we just know that some of these practices are incredibly potent and powerful and 
that's mm-hmm. why we do them. <laughs> I mean, well, it's just yeah. like if I'm not doing my qigong, there's something wrong in the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's been qigong has been such a ah a beautiful way to just to really to drop in and connect and and yeah, it's been it's been fa- it's been fascinating and um, yeah, I'm so I'm so grateful for it. I, I mean, like you know, for those who don't know where creating a um, teacher training and it is really world-class like it's phenomenal and like the question for me is like how can I create something that I would just absolutely love and that is even beyond me and by bringing in other experts to create it yeah like I might be holding the particular thing but um, yeah it's phenomenal and it's also good because I've gone through lots of like evolutionary awakening through the different you know from from okay there's personality which is basic and there's soul and that's a whole big journey and then there's a monad which is above that and that's just one on one cosmic physical body and then there's like many above that and um so it's kind of like i'm making that teacher training important because that embodiment aspect uh is super important to really um because like what you were saying earlier darren like with the different energy systems in the body they all have different intelligence that that inform our mind or inform and, and the body is a living mind anyway and so the one that. integrate and work with all of this yeah it's like there's so much synthesis and embodiment that's taking place so like you just don't think of something from a mental perspective you know you're 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 intuitively alive or aware or you're just there's so much extra information that's coming in that can guide and you know these practices were used like for warriors on the battlefield so it's like a it was a life and death matter we needed to be tuned in to what's going on and not from a fear perspective but from an opportunity perspective to to be in the to be where like same with the pineal gland there's something there's a set in the zen archer course called the manifestation qigong and it particularly works the the activating of the pineal gland and um and basically with the pineal gland it's like in um you know in birds it gives them the ability to flock together and navigate in whale, it's in whales. It's this, um, in their pineal gland. It's the size of a pin. It's the magnetite that gives them the ability to to, to like uh, navigate right around the globe and come back to certain pods and feeding places, etc. Um, and so inside of inside of you know we have a pineal gland as well. And once that gets activated, it's like a natural GPS system that helps us find our life requirements naturally, easily, and automatically. And so then there's another intelligence that's even though it's in the, the, the framework of the mind, it's different to the mind. And it's like a light organ that guides us to where we need to be like automatically and naturally. And so for me, like Qigong has been a way to awaken up the different intelligences of, of what's going on in my, in my being. And um, yeah, and then it becomes a greater, far greater conversation than what I logically think about the data, which I still love, but, after after a while, like at the beginning of my Qigong journey, I was like trying to get as much science as possible. Like I for just, sure, yeah. And, <laughs> and it, was kind of, it was kind of weird back then, and now it's just the most normal thing. And everyone, everyone just once they practice it, they love it. And um, but back when I first started, it was very um, like I, I had you know I was just like practicing in my in in secret, basically you know all day every day as much as possible until I went to China and then lived with the the different teachers. And you know obviously that was just more. It was, you know, we were, we were training in temples or or in places for it, so uh, or out of nature. Yeah, so, but yeah, the hardcore but, man. Oh, I've, I've been hardcore. <laughs> I've been hardcore. I think I've, I think I've softened up a lot, and I'm more. <laughs> to, that's why I like the flavor that you bring in the more um, integrated like life, lifestyle because I've been doing the doing this for some time and and teaching around the world, and then to to come back and teaching like you know all like incredible entrepreneurs and you know all sorts of different variety of people from all walks of life but to come back to the essence of it that's what i love about the team the team has enabled um me personally and also us in the group field to like really start to integrate the embodiment and the lifestyle of of the the work again which is like um it feels very good for me to ground that earth energy and i couldn't do that without the team as well as i would like to so it's, it's like almost like i'm coming back to it with so much love and joy which is yeah so super grateful for you, know, you guys yeah. all these things are amazing so yeah oh we love you man yeah <laughs> i love i love i want to speak really quickly to what you were saying about the mind and the body and the pineal gland and just like the way that you like often i find 
um, you know, if, 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 if you gave me a question, I would normally, the, the normal kind of re reaction is I'm going to think about it. Mm. Right. Mm. But in our conversations, we never do that. We're never going, Oh, let me think about that for a second. No, it's like, what does my body feel about it? Mm. I think it's just like, if you know what a tuning fork is right. When you hit that tuning fork, it's, it's resonating. The whole thing is resonating. It's vibrating. And we forget cells are vibrating. You know, there was this really cool, um, like super mm. slow camera and they, they, they put the camera on the people and then the, it was like 16 seconds and they slowed it down to like very, very, very slow. And what you found was that the person looked and then they sped up the camera in, in the video and the person was standing still for 16 seconds and it looks like they're doing this. Mm. It's just like the body is always moving, right? Like mm -hmm. there, there is so much happening. And if, we, and as you said, there's an innate intelligence to that. And if we practice feeling that innate intelligence, if we practice being still and listening deeply, man, they're, they're loud. I mean, these currents are really loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you, you hear them, you know, you know, for the first couple of times and you, it surprises you. There's a, there's an expansion from it. And I think that's the magic that is, is here. It's always been here. But um, now we get a chance to be more in, in sync with it rather than mm -hmm. in being uh, siloed from it, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I know is an evolution of, of humanity in this moment is that we're, we're, we're no longer in a space where we're feeling in the dark about other people's emotional state, right? Like it seems as though everyone's emotional state is like outside of them. It's easier to see. So that's also a good thing for people who, you know, like us, where we're really, and everyone else who's on this call who, who wants to be a part of this experience that's much deeper. What happens is the energy is moving and now we, we're starting to feel our loved ones more. We're starting to feel maybe it's a stranger you meet and you're just, you're feeling something about them. You can, you can connect with them deeper in a much quicker way. And if you've, and if we like really tap into that innate intelligence, we can, we can provide ourselves with a stronger connection and, and it'll be more successful, right? Like maybe they were just looking for a smile and they got it. Maybe they really needed help with something or the grocery store. And then we're like, Oh, I think you need help with this. But oftentimes we're, we're just passing each other by and there's tons of gifts that we're missing out on because we're not in tune with our own identity. And I think that's one of the strong suits of the Qigong practice is that it really deepens your, 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 uh, your relationship with that innate intelligence. Yeah, I think or at like least I've found that. Yeah. Oh, no, 100 percent. It's such a strong point because we've become a living vibration and that living vibration, like what I got was like there's 10,000 extra things that are activated, like the subtleties of the, you know, but it's not like you're, you're not, you, there's no way you could over mentalize it. So you're just cruising, yeah. you walk, you're living, cheering, and then you're like, hey, you know, and you just feel something and there's an openness and a response in the body that enables the intelligence to move. And like, and yeah. so without Qigong, it's kind of like, feels like you're just walking, you're in your head, you've got to do that, you know, there's no aliveness to the body. It's like, it's like a, a, a if you had a soft drink, one is bubbling and carbonating, the other one's just flat. You know, and, and yeah, like, like, <laughs> it's like you're, you know, you're increasing the, the, the energetic aliveness. Um, oh, and what else? There's something else that really, really awesome that I was going to like speak into there. Yeah. So Qi, Qigong also enables like a, like a, to channel the soul. And so there's that more openness, free. And, and can, Confucius says, um, like, success is created by all the little things that we do. Like in the West, we often try to set like a big I love that big thing and yeah. and then Confucius was like just smile the people be good to people when you meet them thank them just you know just have this be just be a being of virtue basically and just like just mm -hmm. it's all small things that you do that then lead up to the big successes like someone remembering you and, and inviting you into a into like something or someone you know like there's so much that gets open just from all those small things and what Qigong can do is it on the, cause it'll, it'll heighten your ability to tap into the higher mental planes and there's practices for this and there's meditations, etc. Um, and you know, like obviously here, just to be clear in the Chi Ascension tribe, we're focused on a beautiful journal practice, uh, and, uh, um, 
and like the, you know in one qigong set and going in around that and just building the culture around that like obviously there's other you know levels and stages and this is just like the base camp of all the awesomeness that gets to come together and we get to chat about this as a team and, and oh, i love going back to the basics yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like i'm so loving it because sometimes i'm like deep in the forest and i sort of like yeah so but what it does is it enables the soul to um to land more deeply in the body um and there's there's techniques and stuff for that as well but but basically when we tune into our soul and we're more open in our body a soul has come here to connect with other souls to receive the medicine that it needs to live out its soul purpose. Uh, and if we're closed off to the, and we don't practice Qigong, we're not open and intuitively aligned and connected. We don't meet those soul impressions or we're so worried because we haven't worked through our emotional stuff. We haven't done enough embodiment. We haven't broken out of the, the constructs of our mind, our being. So we find it hard to like communicate to other souls. So like Qigong is a great pathway um, to start and starting to open that freedom up. And yeah, and because, you know, obviously like a lot of my particular flavor of Qigong is a lot around soul embodiment. After you've gone through this first first sort of stage, it, we, we talk a lot about the soul and, um, you know, and Qigong is like this way of basically being an, an effective archer. So your soul archery is like, you know, your transmission in the world is, is um, yeah, deeply soul embodied um yeah which is just a word but it's an actual it's like a it's like a you know it's like saying black belt and there's a there's a mm -hmm. there's a level to get there and then you know same with same with um you know i can say i have a black belt but then when i'm if i'm tested on the field then that's when i'll <laughs> i believe you don't want to test me on the field there's no uh, yeah there's no, no, no. no fighting yeah <laughs> it's not so great yeah. Um, no, I think that's, that. I mean, I love, I love what you're saying though, Ryan. I mean, it's just like the Zen archer as you described it. And I, and you know, as I've seen, it's just like I, I, my, one of my Zen teachers, it would say like, you can't, you can't expect to be successful if you're shooting arrows all over the place, right? You've got to, you've got to hone out something. And even if it's not the right thing, it doesn't matter. It's just about saying I'm focusing on something and then I'm just going to try, right? Like, there's that famous Zen phrase, like chop wood, carry water. And after mm -hmm. enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Like it doesn't stop. I think that's, that's part of the, uh, I guess there's an entertainment value that Qigong and other types of spiritual practice, spiritual, I would say spiritual embodiment practices on the planet. Um, and they all have different ways of explaining the, th the kind of the same thing. But if we're, if we're continuously cultivating and nourishing our, ourself from a soul's perspective i think that's i think that's what you're saying is there's there is a uh yeah there's a juiciness to it life becomes much more colorful and magic and um i was telling a friend the other day like you know there's not a lot people don't really feel like they have magic in their world and i'm sure that's opposite from the people that are in this group so it's just like more magic you know, it doesn't matter how small it is. It could be you're walking by a flower and it catches your eye and you just take a breath. Or it could be something profound, like, you know, you're on a on a business call and you're talking with a hundred people and they all need your attention and you're just like focused and aligned and you're you're focused on the target and you feel you are embodying it in, in yourself. And it just that it doesn't that's not something that should be rushed either, right? Like the, yeah. we want to be able to enjoy the process i always tell people i'm in perpetual kindergarten because it's yeah. like there's no like it's so fun it's so playful even the challenging stuff right you know yeah. we gotta we gotta we gotta play with it a little bit yeah love it man beautiful shares beautiful shares so we're probably gonna um finish up in about five minutes so if there's any questions that particularly about any questions anything, yeah feel free to drop feel free to drop them in um um, we've got, so uh, yeah, any questions, feel free like to drop them in. Um, what have we got here? Qigong is amazing. Opens the flow. Yes, I do that. Excellent. Yeah, nice. Ah, that's a cool little effect there with your tea. Uh, I didn't <laughs> even see that. <laughs> Yeah. Tea, tea entertainment yeah mine's i've got to, i've got to re top up my tea get it brother get yeah. it mm.
<sighs> Thank you, Peggy. Sending lots of love into the field. Yeah, and just imagine we've got like, we've got nearly a thousand people all over the world, um, you know, at the moment here practicing Qigong. So uh, if you feel called to share this space with anyone, you know, feel welcome to do that. Um, and I think in a couple of hours, 12.45 p.m. Brisbane time, we've got another 20 minutes of silent meditation, 20 minutes of group shares, 20 minutes of um, just like whatever group magic wants to emerge or whatever transmission comes through. Um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Hey, Laurel, yeah, just definitely have to – we've chatted about some interesting stuff. We've just been in flow, really, just letting it go wherever it wants to go. So Cheat chats. I think our, our next cheat chat is Monday. Your Tuesday. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah so right. we'll, we'll get on it. Bring your questions. We love questions. Yeah, yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free. But I think people are just bathing in the in the, uh, in the the transmission. And um, how do we feel like we want to close? Is there any – is there any, um, I feel like I could sit here for an eternity if, um, yeah. I think one thing I'll say is I implore people, you know, there's a lot, um, you know, people close their eyes, they, they get silent and um, they say nothing's happening. But, you know, if you've been listening to this call, this video, like feel your body, there's a lot happening. And uh, that's enough. You're enough. We are enough. And if we can all just continue to relax into our bodies and come to the space, um, we're going to get a lot out of this together. And I'm really excited for that journey. Mm. Yeah, man. Thank you. Really, really feel that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. May we be open to receive fully our heart's desires and our heart's gifts. Mm. Mm. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Blessings. Is there a Qigong mantra like, um... <laughs> what, what is it, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, there's many different, there's many different mantras and sounds. And, wow. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of different, lots of different ones. And um, maybe one day we'll do it. It's the, the five yin organs, five yeah. yin organ sounds. Yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah. be amazing. Yeah, there's yeah. tons of stuff. There's yeah, there's, there's so much though. Mm -hmm. Like, and uh, you know, for me, it's like I get into that channel of the Tao or the universe. And you know, last night on the mountain, it was great. No one's around, and uh, I done like a 17 minute transmission on on just what was coming alive for me. And um, you know, facing toward it was Libra. Moon was in Libra, so I, yeah, I just went up there and just like just received and. Yeah, all these free flowing movements came through, and um, yeah, just incre incredible. And then, and then all these new sounds that were just activated. Because what I realize is, in this time of quarantine, when we're just, you know, like, you know, get out to nature and put your feet on the grass, and you know, go out to the sun and open your body and go to the moon at nighttime, and and um, because we're collectively there's a lot of fear that's collectively building up at the moment, whether we're consciously aware of it or not. I'm not saying that everyone's necessarily going through this, but, but to, to, to actually be more aware of that and to process that and to use sound and movement and vibration. This is particularly the feminine way, like shake the body and use sound, breath, movement, shift this through because um, you don't want to be like numb. That's one of the reasons why I polarized back up into our brain is because we don't want to feel our emotions and we go up there and, that's why it's good to like go into the shadow and just bring depth of consciousness and love and just vibrate that through because it's, it's our duty as sacred soldiers of the world, sacred warriors of love to transmute the fear and to embody love. Um, because yeah, again, fear is based on superstition. Um, and you know, I'm not talking about the fear that protects us from there's a cliff. I'm not going to, you know, stuff like that, but like the, the emotional fear, it just brings so much superstition out and it's hard to see clearly through the emotional body when there's, when the, and, and we all have that, you know, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a journey to work through. And, um, but yeah. And so, yeah. And then your intuition, your downloads of chi is just like poof, clean and pure and it's just, it's phenomenal. So, um, yeah. 
much love to everyone in the field. Keep on enjoying your daily Qigong. I love the updates. We all love it. I love seeing like uh, we do transformation. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and when Thanks, is it? Man. About two hours from now, we're gonna jump on two hours and and uh, uh, what is it? Two hours and and ten minutes roughly. Ten, yeah, ten fifteen minutes. Yeah, two two hours and ten fifteen minutes. We'll going live for a group set. So if you'd like to be a part of that, then um, yeah, that would be that'd be awesome. Yeah, we could. Brad, thank you so much, so. Darren. And then it's been yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, you're amazing. All right. good. So cool. good. So honored for you to be a part of the team, and uh, all of us to be yeah on the, on this thing. So, all right. Cheers, awesome. everyone. Yeah. <laughs>